the Aristocrats deck has more play to it than a lot of the other decks in the format, which means that it leaves you a lot of rope to hang yourself with. So we didn't win any matches there, but I definitely could have won at least one of them. With better play, we would have 2-0'd the first match we played in that set. And I think with better play, I probably could have beaten the Constance deck too. And you could easily argue that in that third match, I shouldn't have kept the seven we kept in the first game. Yeah, there's a deck with Timothy and Time Warps in it. That's almost certainly terrible. I don't know if I'm willing to invest rank into that one. Yeah, we definitely drew well yesterday too, and I, I, I drew worse in addition to playing worse. Yeah, you're going to have a reasonable number of misses over the course of a tournament, I agree. Yeah, kind of, but like, even with a lot of practice, like, playing a TCG, so like, whenever people at, like talk about TCGs, I always describe playing a TCG tournament as like, you know when you take like, a two hour math test in, in, in school? Like, everyone's taken like, an hour and a half, two hour math test at some point in their life, right? Like, playing, playing a TCG tournament is like, playing a, is like taking a seven hour math test is basically what it comes down to. It's very mentally draining, and by the end of it, it's very easy to make even simple mistakes when you've been doing math for seven hours. It's just, just the reality of the situation. So like, when your deck requires you to be on and like making on-point decisions going very late into a tournament, there's a fatigue factor that comes in from that. And that fatigue factor is definitely slightly less so in a game like Hex where you get to play from home as opposed to like Magic tournaments where you're playing in person, but it definitely still exists. How dare you turn my hobby into a math test? That's what it is, okay? There's a reason why I'm here. I enjoy doing math. That's why I'm here. And if you don't enjoy doing math, but you like TCGs, I have, I have some dirty rotten news for you. You like doing math if you like TCGs. <laughs> Interesting. Dim Diamond Wild Calic. Huh. Okay. Color me intrigued. Need to put another resource on top of my deck here because we really need a another Sapphire for this Heart's Whisperer. The tiny monsters, like, by and large, entertain themselves for large segments. I think I'm just gonna runebind this. Runebind's pretty bad against these decks making coins anyways, and I just, like, don't want them to get started making coins. It could be Hailstorm Leprechaun, you're not wrong. Sapphire, ding, fries are done. Okay, so do I want to Palm? I think I want a Hearts Whisper here for a non-shard to try and find a Pathfinder to get going. 
or it's not bad later. And worth noting with Dark Card, this only makes us sacrifice non-socketed cards, so Warp Steel, actual combo with Dark Card. It's pretty good. Interesting that opponent didn't fate weave a resource to the top last turn. I guess they're gonna guarantee get one when I play something with the Goldfather out here, but kind of kind of an interesting choice. Dark Card is just like such a powerful hex card like dominates boards like this. Like my opponent doesn't have removal, they're gonna get buried very quickly by this Dark Heart. That being said, the flip side's also true. If my opponent answers this Dark Heart and then I don't have an answer to this Goldfather, which this deck really doesn't have answers to Goldfather, we're gonna get buried very quickly by this making a lot of very lucky coins. Whenever you Fate Weave Transform, okay, cute. Cute is the only word I have to describe that. They have the decree of banishing. Okay, yep. Like you said, could, could be in a lot of trouble here. another resource i guess um I, I guess we're just setting up for a big wildlife next turn then right we put a non-resource on top of my deck here that way when they hit me with this vampire prince it gets buried and they don't get it and then hopefully we can hustle them next turn Every day we hustle in. So like, that's definitely a really interesting way to think about it, Kuna, but like, that's super results-based, right? Like, the fact that you played 30 hours was not a specific correlation to like, what happened right like in order to top eight a grand prix you have to get exceedingly lucky any anyone that does well in any tcg tournament has to get exceedingly lucky to do so like these are games where like the best players are only winning you know 30 percent or 70 percent of their matches if that all right so i'm gonna trade one of these in for again six i'm gonna take eight here what do you want to watch okay go show me Go show me. What? Why is this card in your deck? I mean, I don't know why this card is in your deck, opponent, but thank you. I appreciate you, opponent. There was no way I could possibly win this game. And then you put Clash of Steel in your deck. What a, what a great hex card for my just... I am so unbelievably happy right now. Like, we get got by bad deck building like this all the time. Like, someone Clash of Steeled us out of their, out of their, um, their aggro deck the other day, and just like, we got super blown out. So like, to have that happen is just like, so great. I am so happy. What does this do? Their troop you control gets momentum, sure. They they activated the gold father. They activated the gold father and played it randomly off the top of their deck. They discarded three lucky coins that were not so lucky. And they couldn't sacrifice this decree because there's a dark card under it. Here's an interesting question. Do you think, do you think Clash of Steel is still gonna be in my opponent's deck after this match? 
Whoa! What are the odds of getting three of the same? It's got to be pretty low, right? This is my wildlife. My wildlife's amazing. Wildlife on four actually has a lot of really good hits at it, right? Like when you get to four and five, wildlife gets pretty impressive. We are now a justice stream. I mean, they're out here as like a second, a second clash of steel, right? All right, all righty. Um, I don't have reserves. I built this deck last night for testing and I didn't build the reserve because we were only testing game once. <laughs> we're just gonna run it back. We're gonna run it back, it's cool. It's cool. It's great. All right, I'm going to pull the deck list up here so we can have reserves for after this match. Is this a justice stream or a no justice stream? I don't understand. I don't understand. No, that Clash of Steel was in their deck. I didn't play into the unknown that game. Can't reserve wrong with no reserves. Exactly. Someone that gets it. Someone that understands. The next, next level. Seems close. There's 24 reserves. There's 24 shards in this deck. I'm gonna keep it. If we curve out in a dark card, we're probably in a pretty good spot. I think I'd, I'd throw this back on the play because you're pretty likely to miss on the play, but on the draw, we have a good chance of hitting. No idea. I'd assume this deck is bad against the really aggressive decks because, like, we have a lot of hands that like don't have any plays until turn three. Hey, look at that. Professional. Nothing but nothing but professionalism here, folks. Joda with the brand new Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you very much and welcome. I do appreciate that. So we're hanging out here today and using your Amazon fun money here. Subscriptions are always the best way you could support my content. So thank you for that support. I do appreciate it. Next turn we get to go Pippet Pal. Pippet Pal is actually really good with these warp steals too, right? Because it creates multiple bodies. And then Pippet Pal is like, all right, let's amp these amp these dorks up. Huh, so I think I actually want to Palm of Granite here. And the reason for this is 
This way, if I play the Pippin Pal, I'm not guaranteed to be able to play Dark Heart with Runebind up next turn, so I might just not draw another resource, whereas Palm of Granite here plays an additional resource for me and then guarantees I have an extra resource to play next turn too. So next turn, we'll get to play Dark Heart with Runebind up to protect the Dark Heart. That's really bad for us. I wonder if they picked the wrong champion. It, re it really feels like they picked the wrong champion, right? Our champion for four charges gives one of our troops momentum one and it lets us play an additional resource in the turn. Every day we hustle in, hustle in, hustle in. Do I want to? I give this momentum one and then crack in. I don't hate that. Like apply some pressure here. Go this and then shard, shard. French for four. They'll have to sack one of their two things to the dark heart. So long of the gold fazer. The gold fazer has been put into the ground. So we'll let the decree of banishing resolve here. And then when it targets my dark heart, I'm going to rune bind my dark heart in response. Dark Heart is very, very powerful. Block. I wanna hustle this. I probably wanna hustle that, right? Just like make sure they can't draw any more cards. Zap that one. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Actually, it's going to be... So it's going to be really interesting to see. I'd bet... I'd bet reasonable amounts of money that the major gem of clarity is going to rotate with set 9. Um, This is okay for us, right? Like, I feel like we're ahead on board. Like, Brosy Buck is only a good play when you're ahead on board. Also, like, just generated... Generated five rares. I'm so good at this game. Just a true skilled, skilled, truly skilled hexer. At Hogland, he's so good at games. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Give it to me, baby. Uh-huh. Ho ho ho! This looks kind of sweet. I like the cards Pippet Hustler and Exalted Pathfinder. Like, those are both hex cards that I really enjoy playing. And Dark Heart's powerful. Oh, reserves, 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 reserves. Good. Thank you. God bless you, chat fam. I'm so dumb. I've got one thing. Look, we didn't need reserves to win the last match. Do, do, do y'all just not, do y'all just not believe, do y'all just not believe in the main deck? I need, I need everyone to just believe in the main deck. Uh, to get on the subs discord, you just need to link your subscribed Twitch account with your discord app.com account and your discord user settings, and then the server will pop up automatically for you. Favorite hex card, uh, Brown Fox Scout. 10 out of 10 Brown Fox Scout. Instead of this one Gargolith they have in their board, I'm gonna put a Psychic Ascension in the board. I think, I think that's reasonable. I want a Psychic, access to a Psychic Ascension. I 
need reserves to de to net deck accordingly. I need reserves. Please help. You shut your mouth. Brown Fox Scout is great. She she slander my boy. It's slander his tongue. She tell me Brown Fox Scout isn't good enough. He's a he's a saint. Okay. He's the people scout. He's very good at what he does. I'd love to go first. All right. It's okay. Goes warp steel into Pathfinder and then Palm probably. Cloudbounder. I do I do have a special spot in my heart for Cloudbounder. I'd be I'd be lying if I didn't say, if I said anything other than I have a special spot in my heart for Cloudbounder. Cloud, Cloudbounder, Cloudbounder's like my boy. I've got like 50 Cloudbounders. Sorry about that. I was exporting videos to YouTube really quick, so I don't forget. The actual avatar of greed. All right, blood. I'm interested to see how this goes. I wonder if they're playing. Oh, God. So we're about to get an example of why playing decks like this is something I don't enjoy doing in a lot of hex because if you try to be greedy the, trust me when I tell you that someone else in the hex community is way greedier than anything you have dreamed of and you're going to get into a control mirror and you're going to be really sad because their deck's just going to be far and away greedier than what you're playing The reason why we spend so much time playing like the Aristocrats deck and the Momentum deck and stuff like that. Like, I just want to run my opponent out of the game. I don't, I don't want to like try and go bigger than them because I'm always conservative when I build control decks and like I don't like losing to aggro. And like, so like in the last two years of playing Hex, like whenever I try to like mid range something, there's always like someone else that's mid ranging me a little bit harder. One hundred percent or two hundred percent, right? I wonder if I was supposed to into the unknown that decree of banishing, so they don't have another one for this exalted pathfinder. This works how I want it to work, right? Put target card into its controller's hand and then transform, yes. Okay, so I should make sure that that's the right one. Yep, okay, so bounce that one. You have no more decrees of banishing. They were gonna have to discard if they didn't decree my one one. So like, if they had another decree, that seems fine, Burgle. Get a resource, play a resource. Rawr. 
<laughs> Burgle with the hottest of takes. How many more of those do they have? All of them is the answer. I'm so good at hacks. Look at me. Drawing resources when I need to draw. Every day we hustle in, hustle in, hustle in. All right, I just like snap this out at end step here, right? Like I have another threat. I guess this, this isn't optional. So like I have to do this so they can get a blocker. So maybe this isn't very good. I'm so good at this. I'm so good at this. Actually, now it's not lethal, right? No, it is still lethal. All right. Dead? Cleansing touch. Oh, that's the decree of banishing. I was really, really confused there for a second. I was like, uh, why is there a cleansing touch in your deck? Got it. Everything, all the mysteries of the world have been revealed to me through into the unknown. It's concerned for my opponent. All right, we're heading to the greed boards now, right? Like they're almost certainly playing a control deck. What's even money they're on a control deck, right? I should just like snap, bring in all of these, all of these counter spells. I'm gonna trim one of these. I'm gonna put Blight Blossom in this as the miner. So it's up cutting the other guy. Do I want to change, trim anything else? I need to cut one more card here. There's a non-zero chance they're a constant stack, right? Which makes these Grove Wardens dece. Actually, we know they have Decree of Banishing at least, right? What if I cut these into the unknowns and like bring in one of these at least? Let's do that. See how, see how it feels. I want to feel something, you know? No, putting Barry in the Dark Hearts is silly. Like, and unless the game is going long to the point where you're milling your opponent out, burying a card that would have been good for them to draw is no different than them just, like, never having drawn it. Oh, yeah, you're right, aren't you? Grove Warden, this transforms it, right? Gain control and transform. Yeah, good call. Good call. Good call. I'm glad... I'm glad I only boarded in one of them. This constructed format is great. Um, yeah, that's... I, there's, like, so many different things I can be doing. We've got multiple aggressive decks that seem reasonable. There's multiple control decks that seem reasonable. Um, a reanimator combo deck went 7-0 and in the Swiss of the last bash last weekend. Um, the Aristocrats deck's a fun Trixie-style deck that's enjoyable. My body is ready to discard this Grove Warden to this Demented Whispers next turn. Just him over here. What? Oh no! Oh no! How do I? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, guess I'll give them a Night Foam.
it, I think that the assessment that this is going to kill me is correct. Is Lady Avalanche champion solely for Pathfinder and Palm of Granite? Yeah, basically. It's also like we're accelerating into wildlife too. So that's that's a very real a real thing. So Relux, one of the things that's important to realize about TCGs, especially early in the format, is like just looking at at the data. Like your your data it isn't useful in the terms of just like looking at raw numbers. So your data, for instance, has the Haraza deck is performing the best deck. But I would say as someone who like has experience testing and playing in the format, the Haraza decks actually aren't fantastic in this format, even though they're good according to your data sheet. Um, and that's just because like Haraza was like the easy week one deck to build. Like there was like, it's, it's the obvious deck that's easy to build. Can you tell me what control decks you're winning against other controllers? I think the Sapphire Diamond control deck is the one to beat the other controllers. I don't think it's a mistake that Sapphire Diamond control has won the bash the last two weeks. I don't, I don't think that was an accident. I don't think that's true, Burgle. I think, I think you're overestimating it a little bit. I think if your goal is to play a control deck that beats the other control decks, I think Sapphire Diamond gives you the best chance to do that. Uh, I'm standing up because sitting for five hours at a time is bad for my back. Good lord, just right in the dick. Just punch me in the dick repeatedly, opponent. Just, ah. Was that too graphic? That might have been too graphic. But that that's how I feel right now. Kaka twice me. Ugh. 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 So Kaka twice is an uninterruptible discard two cards from your opponent. So on top of Demented Whispers, my opponent also has Kaka twice in their deck. Huh. Really just don't want to get attacked by this guard, and I kinda wanna draw a resource next turn. So I'm gonna counter this in Fate Weave, a resource. Ding, ding, ding. Back for four. I don't think that's true, Burgle. I think you're wrong. I think Clash of Steel and, um, I think Clash of Steel and Aldurthan's Glory and Guidance are all really important parts of the Diamond Sapphire control deck. Come to me, my seed children. Come to me. Uh, you outgreed PA by getting to PA faster and then PAing harder than them once you get there. Oh, that's not good. That dies, so it triggers this. Am I going to lose eight here now? No, just four. Okay. Man, I'm going to die. And die in a blaze of verdicts. I... <sighs> Sapphire Diamond was beating those decks, Burgle. I'm just... I'm just going to be results-oriented and say, I, like... It, two weeks in a row, people have showed up with all of those decks and like the other control decks that you're saying are better were in the top eight with Sapphire Diamond and Sapphire Diamond has won both times. And like my experience playing with the Diamond Sapphire deck is that it feels very reasonable against the other control decks. It feels very reasonable against the other control decks. All right, now we're dead. Let's take three seed counters. I 
I don't think we have a series of draws to let us kill our opponent here. I guess we get some crazy plants next turn, right? My phone is telling me I need to submit my article. It is correct. And die next turn to this Twilight Eclipse. Oh, yeah, get that big old cock in there. What's going on, Fred? Oh, I should have put momentum on something, right? This should be a bigger than this. Is that lethal? That's lethal, right? I do this here, and then they block the six, and then they die. Ding! Fries are done. Bum 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 bum. Dun 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 dun. Ding 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 ding. I'd like to dedicate this victory to Aryan Jesus. May he always be with us. That's why you don't just pack it in, ladies and gentlemen. Never punished. No justice. Officially back. I was worried there for a second. I was worried that this was a justice stream after the Clash of Steel that happened earlier today. But turns out this is still a no justice stream, right? It's zero, zero, zero justice all around the board. <laughs> Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for joining us for my Hex it's Shards of Fate stream this morning. Every Wednesday and Friday morning here, all Hex all morning. If you're enjoying what you see, please make sure you hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything else so that people find my stuff. If you're really enjoying what you see and want to help support me making more of this content, please consider subscribing on Twitch or becoming a patron on Patreon. You can also support my content by supporting my sponsors. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using promo code JEFF12, you can save 12% on uh, custom playmats, mouse pads. They do sleeves. They do binders, all sorts of different stuff. And HexPrimal.com would love to buy and sell Hex TCG singles with you. Using promo code JEFF5, you can save 5% on all of your orders there with them. Yeah, I thought I thought we, I said the words were just dead, and then we ran some stuff into a rune bind, and I was like, oh, all right, sure, lucky, 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 lucky. Now, always remember, folks, if you are presented with two choices, and one of them is being lucky, and one of them is being good, always choose being lucky. Is much better. Much better. Um, I looks at my cards and I see this hand doesn't have any plays until turn three or four, and I keep it because this deck is mostly no plays until turn three or four. <laughs> Ruby Bishop Elijah, interesting. Interesting. Every, so every TCG format 
is about decks having good and bad matchups. The thing that makes some TCG formats much better and more enjoyable than other TCG formats, in my opinion, is when the matchups that are difficult for your deck have play to them. What I mean by this is if my deck has a bad matchup, but I know when both players play well, I can drag that matchup from say, you know, 40 to 45% and only be a 5% dog in that matchup. That's much more enjoyable than playing a matchup where say I'm 20 or 30% to win. There are, there are variations of, of the matchup lottery. And then there's formats like, like Legacy where there's just some decks that are much better than everything else and literally don't have bad matchups like Grixis Silver. But that's, that's a discussion about another game that's made by people that don't really design games that well anymore. Once upon a time, 25 years ago, they were really good at designing games. But unfortunately for them, it is no longer 25 years ago. All right, what am I doing here? I think I'm playing the Sapphire Ice and putting a resource on top of my deck here. And then I'm probably rune binding one of these to buy a little bit of time. And then we're going to curve like Pathfinder plus some shards next turn. Or maybe just a Pip Pippet Hustler, honestly. All right, so it's just a straight attack with these two. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rune bind one of these just so like they don't trigger momentum and like build more off of each other. Yeah, but like there aren't other Psychic Ascension decks in the format, Burgle. That's kind of scary. Okay, um, huh. So do I want to into the unknown this? Part of me feels like I just want to tell my opponent to pick this up, right? I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna tell my opponent to pick this up. No more, no more Heart of Embers opponent. No more. Give him the old, the old finger wag there. I mean, like that's completely irrelevant, Custa. Like it's probably true, but it's, just, it's like me saying that like Declan's running in circles right now. It's objectively true, but it's not relevant to what we're talking about. I could hustle it, but like. Another, I guess hustling it would be good against this 2 3. Wise Magistrate, that's annoying. My chef is a chef, and now I'm a chef. What? Really? A chef is a now I'm a chef. No. And a chef, and a chef, and Every day we hustle in, hustle in, hustle in. I love this card. So. These are both going to be three fours, and by that I mean they don't have a shard. God bless. All right, well, we're going to hustle here. Shoot this one. He is starting to get real words. It's kind of interesting. Blaze of glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Balmy breeze is blowing through ya. Pippet hustler's gonna void ya. Do, 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 do. I think I'm just hustling again here. And then if we brick on a shard next turn, we'll probably just wildlife for three. Uh, Declan is two and a half and Jake is almost four. 
Your move, Yugi boy. Every day we hustling, hustling, hustling. Bum 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 I love when this is just like actual factual cold hard removal. I'm not a big fan of Dream Call in general, but I think it's a good tool for fighting like the Kaka Twice decks because like on average, Dream Call creates really bad cards. But the key detail about, about that is that when your opponents are just like making you discard cards in mass, having like this extra chaff lying around that you can just like bin to a Kaka Twice doesn't seem unreasonable. What's going on, Cody? Morning. So I don't, I don't know that I, I'd go all in on dream calls, but playing a non-zero amount of them seems fine. We have Brutus Exalted Commander. There's a Sapphire Diamond and Blood Diamond that we played. The Sapphire Diamond felt, actually felt kind of okay. The Blood Diamond was comically bad. We're gonna pile a berry pouch. My Exalted Commander, our Exalted Pathfinder here. Bah. No, I don't think the portal decks are very competitive. There was a grandfather elk deck that seemed like it might be doing okay things that we played a little bit that, that played some portal cards, but it definitely wasn't a dedicated portal. Ruby Diamond Momentum is kind of interesting. I feel like you just like don't have cards that like, oh, this isn't, this was a Heart of Embers. Okay, that makes sense. Portal has like some control over it, right? Because like you can predict the rarity of the thing you're going to get from it. Incoming Clash of Steel. Sh shut up, Rogue. Ugh. Holy crap. That's... That's a Frost Lock. Yep. Yep. Alrighty, I didn't... I didn't need those three anyways. Joke's on you. Correct. Runebind is very good against wildlife. Very, very good. I grab non resources with this, I think. Ding, ding, ding. Mmm. Mmm. Nice frost lock you got over there. It'd be a damn shame if someone had to, if you had to sacrifice it. Just, just the worst. <laughs> what? Red Ribson said. That being said, I'm not playing around Clash out of them because they're they're very they they likely shouldn't be playing at least not game one. Especially not with Frostlock in their deck. What do you need help with? Can we dump it out? It is a choo-choo. You built a choo-choo puzzle. Good job. Dad's got to finish slaying a new. Nerd slaying. Nerd slaying. Lumagoth. Oh, that was man. Damn it. Damn it into the unknown. You're the reason we can't have nice things into the unknown. In into the unknown confirmed the reason we can't have nice things. Dang it. Uh, 
Opponent's deck not actually all over the place. We just made it all over the place. It's a good one. It's a good one. More dirt cards are good. They'll claw through my opponent's board here pretty quickly. Although we can wildlife for four next turn, right? So I probably would rather do that than play. Probably rather do that than play uh, play more dark cards out. They have a pretty big board, so like playing two more dark cards out isn't going to get to the frost any time soon. Why no hero power? Because I like to save the hero power for a turn where I can guaranteed play an extra resource with it and I didn't have an extra resource to play there. I ain't just like playing it to have uh, have momentum trigger like is it stellar. Yeah. Opponent's giving it the college best here. If they get too aggressive here, it might be better to play the extra dark herbs out next turn. The fact that this Pathfinder is a 6-6 right now is a pretty big deal for us though. And kind of holds the fort down. Are we going to play magic today? Not this morning. Uh, I'll see I'm feeling this afternoon how the kids are. I might, I might do an afternoon magic stream. I haven't decided yet. Trade, eat, trade, and I'm taking eight here. Hi. I can jump block here. Yeah, that seems fine. Take four. Yeah, wildlife at Exus Four is usually pretty good. Oh, right, they get the champ power of their wax shot back. That makes sense. Okay, they weave in it. Sure. I wonder if I need to just play the. I wonder if I need to play the dark hearts now, though. We'll see. So dark heart would get rid of three of their things. Yeah, I probably need to play the dark hearts out. Yeah, let's just let's just play these. I'm at 11. I've got plenty of blockers here. They're going to lose three things. Triggers. These are my dark hearts. My dark hearts are amazing. Good morning, Dwight. Second frost lock would be kind of scary. All right, they kept their momentum troops and then got paid off. Neo's a free chump block here, since I'm gonna have to sacrifice him anyways. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're cutting white the voters from the deck. Re your question in Discord. Pretty, I'm pretty sure we're cutting white the voters from the deck. 
A shard is great. Means this makes five dorks now instead of four. Make my dark cards five fives. Just kill my opponent here. They're gonna have to sacrifice three other things next turn. Okay, so they're an aggressive deck, so I probably want these Blight Bushes. This is probably a fine Dreaded matchup. Probably cut one of these. This is probably not a Weave into Nothing matchup. Seems fine. Oh, I don't want Verdicts. Why did I bring Verdicts in my deck? A couple of... Oh, I wanted, I wanted Dread End. I clicked on Verdicts. All right. This seems fine. Give it a go. Um... I can't keep this in good conscious, right? Just doesn't do anything till turn. This hand has so many, I'm, I'm gonna keep it. I feel like I can't not keep hands like this in this deck. Like this deck is just like mono hands that just like don't do anything for a while. Yes, I do have a standing desk now, it's great. Perfect, look at you just, you just gotta believe. You gotta believe and get by with a little help from your friends. With this edition, this hand's now fantastic. We get a wild next turn, we get to go boop into boop into boopity boop. Beepity boop into boop. Hey, Kitchen Finks with the 2113 sub. Thanks for getting me into Hex Guy. I'm hoping to play my first bash this week if I get the rest of my stuff. Sweet. Uh, so every year, Hex does um, honors several players in the community that kind of like go above and beyond and like help help do extra things for the game. And um, I was one of their honor community members this year. So they add a depiction of you as artwork as a sleeve in the game that I get to use. And um, this artwork is on the Exalted Commander card that was in the set. The Exalted Pathfinder here is Infamous Neo. And then uh, Exalted Cabalist, I'm blanking on his first name, but it is the gentleman that runs um, TCG Browser. I'm basically like a Hex drug dealer. Like, if Hex Constructed was a drug, I'm definitely like the number one dealer NA. They attack with this, I think I'm gonna double. They probably have the deal X damage card here. They don't, sweet, I will happily take this trade. Get some Blight Blossoms afterwards. I actually have an open emote slot, Maester. I need to I need to commission some artwork for for the emote slot.
I did not. So the hex team, hex team does the card design. So now here's a question, and this is, do I play inf do I play Exalted Pathfinder out here and start drawing some extra cards, or do I just play the dark card? If they attack with this, I'm gonna double, and then we're definitely playing this, or we're just gonna do that because that's that's great. That's wonderful. Yep, sounds wonderful. This turns every troop into play into a Dreadling, which Dreadlings are one ones that have to attack that sacrifice at the end of turn. Sometimes, sometimes the top of your deck makes the rest of your decisions very easy. Oh, that makes sense. They had the Righteous Outlaw to get back with their champion power. That's sweet. If they don't have another play this turn, this dark card will be pretty nut busting. Yeah, if they if they can't take this dark card off the table, they are going to be up a creek without a paddle here. I think I'm sacrificing non socketed card every turn. This is my dark card. My dark card's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's probably going to be a wrap on this game. He's been brought to justice. Not necessarily. It means we get to double spell later, mage, which is the reason to play it out. Sure. It would it would have saved Neo there, which would have been nice, but No, I just just don't be greedy. Just kill their things. We're not we're gonna we're gonna win this game with a bunch of cards in our hand, folks. So just like don't don't get greedy. Just just pl play your cards out. I'm gonna hold this one since I have a champ power guaranteed with it. And it's gonna draw me another shard guaranteed, but just like Get get your nugs in. Just like play play your card, keep the board clear, preserve your health total. This dark card's gonna be really close to lethal this turn. Let's do this. And then we'll do this. And if we had a non-slow shard, we could palm of granite as well. So our slow shard, tilt. We'll put grab another resource here. That's fine. Back up for seven. Dark card is non-socketed card. So it answers literally everything. It's not even about playing perfectly. Like my, I think my line was fine. You just, again, the people in chat are, are suggesting lines that maximize card advantage when I'm just looking to maximize preserving my life total. You're trying to prioritize the wrong resource. This game isn't about this, this matchup isn't about um, card advantage in the strict sense. It's more about preserving my health total than anything else. Yes, correct. We're rune binding the dark card so Neo lives. That's exactly what I'm doing because it's great. Now, and look, so like we missed drawing one card earlier, but I kept my health total higher by doing so. And now we get to draw a bunch of cards. It doesn't matter. Neo's a 1717. We get to crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch. Did you use opponent? This deck actually seems really good. This deck. That, that deck was really impressive. Um, ha. Huh. I might have to spend some more time on this before, before Saturday. I can see why um, the team that put the, 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 the Pragmatic Conclave as their hex testing team. Nova Kane and Mustache Magic and uh, Hot and a couple other names I'm forgetting. But there's a reason why there were several of them in the top eight. This deck's doing some really powerful stuff. Um, I'm going to 